In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Jesus, for gathering us here, Lord. We thank you for putting the desire in each of their hearts to come and attend this quiz and to remember whatever they have learned in the past few weeks. Lord, we thank you that whoever is listening to this on YouTube, that they will also begin to have that desire to know you, Lord, and to examine their own hearts and understanding of how much they know you. That will draw them to an understanding of that they need to continuously know you, Lord. Knowing you is a never-ending process. And Lord, we thank you for giving us this privilege to even have these type of sessions. And thank you, Holy Spirit, for ministering to each of us and giving us an understanding of God's word and helping us to know him better. We make this prayer in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 So, um, welcome everyone. And we have had our Zoom meeting with the quiz where few of us have few attended the quiz through the Zoom meeting. And we finished the quiz now. And now we are going to go through the questions and answers. So those who are listening on YouTube, um, you can either watch this video and see the questions and pause before I say the answer. Or you can even click the link in the description box where the link will have this quiz and you can participate in the quiz through the link in the description box. Praise God. So, Marks of a True Christian, this was teaching given, given by Janice. So, what passages in Romans tells us about the marks of a true Christian? Romans 12, 1 to 9, Romans 12, 9 to 21, Romans 11, verses 1 to 12, or all of the above? The right answer is Romans 12, 9 to 21. What is one of the callings that we are created for? to give and receive donations, to give and receive financial advice, to receive and give love, or to give and receive food recipes? The right answer is to receive and give love. Love is patient, love is kind. Where do we find this in the Bible? 1 Corinthians 13, 1 Corinthians 14, 1 Corinthians 15, or 1 Corinthians 16? The right answer is 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Will God ever give us any difficult task without a way to do it, without help? Option one, yes. The entire point of giving us a difficult task is to teach us how to do things ourselves so we can grow stronger in faith. Second option is no, he's always around to help us, showing us ways to get it done at every difficulty in life. The right answer is Option two, what is the one constant that we need to be doing? Playing, painting, praying, or packing? The right answer is praying. What does God tell us to do in Matthew 5, 43, verses 43 to 45? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Love our enemies and pray for those who persecute us. Hate our enemies and seek revenge on those who persecute us. Or ignore our enemies and avoid praying for those who persecute us. The right answer is love our enemies and pray for those who persecute us. According to the Bible, what will we gain by loving our enemies and praying for those who persecute us? We will gain power and authority over our enemies. We will gain the ability to control the thoughts and actions of our enemies. We will gain the reward, uh, reward of being children of our Father in heaven. Or we will gain material wealth and prosperity. The right answer is 
we will gain the reward of being children of our Father in heaven. According to the Bible, what does Romans 12 verse 15 say? To ignore those who are rejoicing and mourn alone. To only rejoice with those who rejoice and ignore those who mourn. To mourn with those who rejoice and rejoice with those who mourn. Or to rejoice with those who rejoice and mourn with those who mourn. The right answer is to rejoice with those who rejoice and mourn with those who mourn. According to Colossians 3, 12 to 13, how should Christians clothe themselves? With anger, rudeness, arrogance, harshness, and impatience, with apathy, meanness, haughtiness, severity, and irritability, with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience, or with indifference, cruelty, pride, aggression, and intolerance? The right answer is, with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. What does Romans 12, 16 tell us about? Living in harmony with others and not being proud or conceited, promoting conflict and division, ignoring the needs of others, or being arrogant and boastful. The right answer is living in harmony with others and not being proud or conceited. What does Romans 12, 21 teach us to do? Be overcome by evil and respond with evil. Not be overcome by evil, but to overcome evil with good. Or ignore evil and hope it goes away. Or seek revenge against those who do evil. The right answer is not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Recognizing the times and preparing for Jesus' return, this teaching was given by Chris. What does Matthew 24 verse 3 teach us? The history of the Israelites in the Bible, the importance of prayer in our daily lives, signs of the end times and the coming of Jesus Christ, or the teachings of Jesus on forgiveness and love? The right answer is signs of the end times and the coming of Jesus Christ. Which was the mount that Jesus sat upon according to Matthew 24 verse 3? So now if you haven't read this verse, it can get confusing because I put the option of Mount Sinai. So since we are all, uh, you know, we all refer Mount Sinai. Yeah. So it is a tricky, it's a tricky answer. Anyone knows the answer? Yes, Mount of Olives. Yes, it's Mount of Olives. Yes, so Jesus sat upon Mount of Olives and gave that teaching to them. In Matthew 24, to whom did Jesus speak the signs of his coming? Only the crowd or only the disciples or the crowd and the disciples or the Pharisees. Here also, you will have to read that passage in order to know it, like as we went through the class when Chris Mount gave the of Olives. Sorry? Can you repeat? Okay, so the options are these. So anyone knows the answer? Only the disciples. Yes. Praise God. It was only the disciples. He, uh, Jesus did not tell this to the crowd and the disciples. It was only to the disciples. Yes. At the same time, we are now disciples of Christ. So Jesus is even speaking this to us as well. Praise God. <clears throat> are some of the signs for Jesus in Matthew 24 happening right now? Yes or no? This is easy. So the answer is yes. What does Jesus advise us to do when we hear of wars taking place? To join the war, to panic and be fearful, to hide and stay away from the war, or not to be alarmed or troubled? The right answer is... No, not, not to be alarmed. Yes. Praise God. Matthew 24 verse... 
11 says, For nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And there will be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places. So what are these things according to Matthew 24, verse 8? A metaphorical statement about the human condition, the beginning of sorrows or birth pains before the end times, a reference to a specific event in history or the end of sorrows or birth pains before the end times. Anyone knows the answer? The end of sorrows of birth pains before the end, end times. The, you said the end of sorrows or beginning of sorrows? End of sorrows. End of sorrows. The right answer is the beginning of sorrows. But Jesus said that it's the beginning of sorrows or birth pains before the end times. Because it's happening before the end times. No? So that's why it all these things that will be taking place, it becomes the beginning of sorrows or birth pains before the end times. Yes. Is the church only a building today? Yes, yes it is. Or no, it is more no, than that. No, it is more than that. A church is where the people of God gather. Amen. Praise God. What happens when you begin to read and understand the scriptures and understand the teachings of Christ? Christ will come late. Christ will not come. Christ is coming soon. Or Christ will send someone else. Christ is coming soon. Amen. Christ is coming soon. As well. Does everyone in Christ have a purpose in life? Yes. Big or small, everyone has a purpose. Or no, our lives are stress-free, persecution-free and happy always. Or maybe it depends on what we feel like. Right answer is... Yes, we got more everyone as their own purpose. Amen. What is our primary weapon against the enemies of God and the principalities? The name of Jesus, holy water, physical weapons, or knife? Right answer is... The name of Jesus. Amen. Somebody had put physical weapons as the answer. I don't know whether that was by mistake. Yes, yes, I, yes I put it by mistake. <laughs> because I was oh. in the auto that time. I was in auto that time. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> oh, coming to home. Okay. So what is the best way of sharing the word of God? Now, very important to read the question. If you don't read the question, then you can un choose a wrong option. So down, it is saying through correct interpretations or through testimonies or through scriptures or all of the above. So the question through is the best. The best way will be through your testimonies. You will add scriptures as you're giving your testimony, but the main thing is actually your experience when you share. When you share your experience, Holy Spirit uses that more powerfully to uh, impact somebody else. The word of God, definitely, it has power, it's active. But your testimony, like how God has changed your life, through the word of God, is the best way to share the word of God with others. Praise God. So, Actually, it was, it was came on my mind through testimony, but uh, I disobeyed that to a voice and I wrote something. <laughs> it's mistake. It's my okay. problem. It's no. not Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit has already said me through testimony and uh, I disobeyed that voice. <laughs> No problem. God is God is, is forgiving. <laughs> yes. Praise God. What is important for us to do in today's world? To be one with the word and practice it every day. To be one with the word and share it to others. To be one with the word and seek a better understanding every day or all of the above. So here the right all answer of, is all, all of, of the of above. Them. Yes. So next is Halloween is not celebrated by Christi uh, by Christians. And this teaching was given by myself. So why is Halloween a Christian festival? Because Christians all over the world celebrate it. 
or it is it isn't a christian festival and should not be celebrated what is the right answer it is not a christian festival and uh, it is not a christian festival and should not be celebrated amen praise god the origins of halloween is is through pagan traditions pagans that are like you know they believe in many gods and uh, or they don't believe in gods like that so it was a very demonic uh, it has demonic roots the pagan tradition of halloween so it is it isn't a christian festival so it should not be celebrated what does halloween celebrate it celebrates death dark practices things that aren't related to christianity or all of the above right answer is it celebrates it celebrates dark practices uh? all of the above yes but the answer is all of the above because even even these other two options are this uh, like it's also correct so all these three options are correct so it's all of the above <sighs> what kind of festival is halloween a pagan festival a roman festival an elvish festival or a jewish festival the right answer is a pagan a festival yes who or what does halloween glorify darkness and satan jesus and his disciples the pumpkin farmers of america or all of the above the right answer is jesus and his disciples No, how oh, how and Satan and his disciples. I didn't uh, heard that question. <laughs> Sorry, I, actually <laughs> I wrote darkness and Satan, but I, I said that's different. I wrote different. <laughs> I clicked in darkness and Satan. <laughs> okay. What does Revelation twelve nine talk about? Satan deceiving the whole world, deceiving North America, or deceiving the world. or to see in south america so satan one, deceiving the whole world yes one of the deceiving the romans but that's not correct the satan deceiving the whole world. that's what the scripture talks is what does ephesians 5:8 in the bible mean to live in ignorance to live in darkness to live as children of light or to live in sin right answer is to live as children of light praise god according to the bible before people came to christ why were they sometimes darkness because they were spiritually active because they were aware of god's truth because they were following false gods or because they were living in sin and separated from god because they were following false god because they were following false god because they were living in sin and separated from god's light <clears throat> yes that is that's the correct answer because they were living in sin and separated from god's light why the answer is not following false gods because according to the scripture it is talking about for you were sometimes in darkness but now you are you are you are in the light of the lord so that is because before you were born again you were not uh, spiritually alive you were living in sin and separated from god because you had not accepted jesus christ and whatever he had done for you once you have accepted jesus and accepted him as your lord and savior then you are out from the darkness and you are now into the light so according to that um, the scripture that we had gone through uh it's uh, it says it implies that because people were living in sin and separated from god's light when they came to christ they were in darkness but they were now in light so that is all about sin right what causes a born again believer of christ to still participate in halloween activities a renewed mind having knowledge of the truth that halloween is a pagan ritual rooted in wickedness or an unrenewed mind having no knowledge of the truth that halloween is a pagan ritual rooted in wickedness 
So the right answer is anyone? The unrenewed. And renewed mind okay. having no knowledge of the truth that Halloween is a pagan ritual rooted in wickedness. Yes, amen. But Please I God. know something. I, I think you clicked on a renewed mind. Yeah, if you don't uh, read yeah. and understand the question and options, then you will, you will think that... You yes, know, because I didn't yeah. read it properly. Hmm. When I read it, I understood. Yes. An unrenewed mind will participate in Halloween activities. A renewed mind will not because renewed person, a renewed mind, that person knows, okay, Halloween's not okay. It's a pagan ritual. It's rooted in wickedness. So I shouldn't associate myself with that celebration. According to Jesus' teachings, what does Halloween glorify? Halloween does not glorify anything specific. Halloween glorifies God, worshipping God, angels, and manifestations of the power of the Holy Spirit. Or Halloween glorifies Satan, devil worship, witchcraft, and black magic and demons. Or Halloween glorifies treating people with good actions. The right answer Halloween is... glorifies God, worshipping God, angels, and manifestations of the power of the Holy Spirit. Janicea, thank you. Thank you. Will Halloween glorify God, worshipping God? Halloween glorifies Satan, devil worship, witchcraft, and yes. magic and demons. <clears throat> yes, that is the answer. <laughs> <laughs> you have to think, you have to think, okay, how can Halloween glorify God? Either it's going to glorify God. Okay. Okay. So, it is rooted in evil, glorifying <laughs> Satan. <laughs> Yes. What does Ephesians 5, 9 say? For the fruit of the Spirit consists in all love, peace, and joy. For the fruit of the light consists in all darkness and deceit. For the fruit of the Spirit consists in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. Or for the for the fruit of the light consists in all evil, unrighteousness, and lies. Right answer is? For the, for the fruit of the Spirit consists in all love, peace, and joy. If that is not the right answer. Right answer is consistent goodness, righteousness, and truth. This is to I Yeah, the, the, yes, the scripture this, says so this like this because I wrote this, but I'm telling something. Because okay. but this is the I think on peace and joy because I think uh two of all I think I clicked on love, peace and joy. Yeah, it's Galatians. Uh, yeah, Galatians. Yeah, right. I think me also. Yeah, but according to uh, yeah, according to the question, so it's like you have to focus. You have to not focus on the time limit that is there of answering the question, like that. You will not be able to then click on the right option. So mm -hmm. try to answer the question because when you see Ephesians five nine, then you will know it is not love, peace, and joy, because that is there in some other scripture. So Galatians five twenty. So if you yeah, sign, I'm going to Yes. So for the fruit of the spirit consists in all goodness, yeah, right? Which one can I conclude? Galatians five twenty two and this one. Yes. Ephesians <laughs> five ten says, "Eating what is acceptable unto the Lord." How does Halloween prove that it is not acceptable unto the Lord? Halloween is a harmless holiday that brings joy to children. Halloween is a time of community and celebration. Halloween is a cultural tradition that has no religious significance. Or Halloween has pagan origins and promotes practices that go against Christian beliefs. The right answer is... Halloween is the armless holiday that brings joy to the children. Halloween has pagan origins and promotes practices that go against Christian beliefs. Yes, that is the answer. So why Halloween is why why is this option that Halloween is a harmless holiday that brings joy to children? You have to think of the question. Question is asking is does Halloween prove that it is not acceptable unto the Lord? Like how does it 
prove, like from the scripture. It proves that because it has pagan origins, the proof cannot be that it brings joy to children and it's a harmless holiday because it is not a harmless holiday. When there is demonic activity taking place on that day, it, demonic activity anyways happens every day, but on that day, people are engaging with the devil much more on a much higher level because they are opening the doors to the demons to attack them. So it cannot be a harmless holiday. And for children, it can it does bring joy to them when you know they are just having sweets and all of that. But that is that shouldn't be done because the root of it, you have to look at the purpose of why you're celebrating. We have to not conform to the pattern of the world. No, this Halloween is not something that Jesus has come up with or the word of God has come up with. It's something that's come up in the world. It's a worldly tradition. So that is the reason. Praise God. Yes. Ephesians 5.11 says, I have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of Shpatra. Did you come across this question or did it get skipped? I'm not sure. <clears throat> and have no fellowship with the unfruit work of lack, unbelief, but rather, but rather expose, expose them, expose the truth. No, from the uh, from the options, from the options, okay. I had to choose. Right. Yes. 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 Darkness, but works, rather than works light. Works of light. Works of darkness. Yeah. Works of darkness. Yes. Darkness, but rather than light them. No, but rather expose, ex reprove them. Yes. Praise God. That's Praise the right God. So the, the according to the scripture, it is exposed or reproved them. Uh, but Janicia, since she put light, you can say that as you're exposing yeah. them, it's like light is being shown on that uh, whole aspect. So it's an exposure. It's, it's a when you're exposing something, also you are bringing light into the darkness. But uh, according to the scripture, it is exposed or reproved them. Okay. Is God. What does 2 Corinthians 6 14 teach us? The irrelevance of being yoked with anyone, believers or unbelievers, or the importance of being unequally yoked with believers and not being yoked with believers, or the importance of being yoked with believers and not being unequally yoked with unbelievers, or the importance of being the yoked importance, with importance. The importance of being yoked with unbelievers and not being unequally yoked with believers. Right answer is the importance of being yoked with believers and not being unequally yoked with unbelievers. Wait, I think, I think there is a mistake here, no? Wait. No, no, it's correct. <laughs> For a moment, I even got confused. Um, I was also wrong with this. Yes. No, I, I was I was trying to think what Janicia said and then I got confused. <laughs> okay. 2 Corinthians 6 14 implies that believers of Christ have no communion with darkness, which teaches us that Christians can have no communion with Halloween. True or false? False. The answer is true. True. Why is it true? 
स्पिरिट The right answer is to have, to have a closer relationship with God, be guided by the wisdom and power, and bear the fruit of the spirit. Amen. Let's go. According to the Bible, what does Philippians four eight teach us to do? Think about things that are false, dishonorable, wrong, impure, ugly, despicable, mediocre, and shameful. Think about things that are true, noble, right, pure, lovely, admirable, excellent, praiseworthy. Think about things that are false, dishonorable, wrong, impure, ugly, despicable, mediocre, and unworthy. But think about things that are untrue, ignore, ignoble, wrong, impure, ugly, despicable, mediocre, and shameful. Right answer is. Think about things that are true, noble, right, pure, lovely, admirable, excellent, and praiseworthy. Amen. Yesterday only, oh, yesterday only, Holy Spirit teaches me that word. I don't know why, <laughs> and it's two times. Is God? That is that that scripture, and even Romans twelve too. Like they are like our spiritual scriptures and things we have to like you know apply in our life. That helps us to, uh, you know, that helps us to be set apart, uh, from the world. Praise God. So, uh, does Halloween conflict with Philippians four eight? Yes or no? Yes, 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 yes. Praise God. <laughs> and Christians decorate themselves with things that glorify darkness and Satan. Yes, sometimes it depends or no. Yes. 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 Think no. again. Yes. No. Yes. 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 Ah. Yes. Can can Christians huh? you decorate yeah, yourself with things that glorify yes, darkness and Satan? Glorify? No. Ah, no. 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 <laughs> no. <laughs> the answer is no. <clears throat> One John four verse four says, "You are of God, little children, and I've overcome them." That is false prophets, because he who is in you is greater than he. The devil who is in the world. What does the scripture mean? The scripture means that believers have no power to overcome false prophets because the devil is too powerful. The scripture means that false prophets are stronger than believers because they are more cunning. Believers have the power to overcome false prophets because the Holy Spirit in them is greater than the devil in the world. Believers have the power to overcome false prophets because they are smarter than the devil. Right answers. Yes. Believers have the power to overcome false prophets because the Holy Spirit in them is greater than the devil in the world. Amen. Praise mm -hmm. God. Praise God. <laughs> Ephesians four thirty. How should now? This was a bit confusing. I could see. Um. So the op. I read the options. We should not grieve the Holy Spirit of. God, we should always grieve the Holy Spirit of God. We should worship the Holy Spirit of God, or we should ignore the Holy Spirit of God. So the right answer is we should, we we should, should worship the, the Holy Spirit, Spirit of God. We should not grieve the Holy Spirit of God. Yes, that is the answer. We should not grieve the Holy Spirit. Of God. So according to four Ephesians four thirteen, if you have. Been in the class, then actually, you would have known. Actually, I wrote this. I wrote this, and I said something because it's exactly <laughs> Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Praise God. You you can see how the Holy Spirit also is speaking to you, to you know, reminding yes. you something. But then you didn't. You were trying to use your understanding, so that that yes. is something to all of us. What does Hebrews eleven twenty five teach us? 
neglecting eternal rewards has no consequences or the bible does not teach anything about choosing between temporary and eternal rewards or choosing temporary pleasures and treasures of this world over eternal rewards can lead to negative consequences or choosing temporary ple pleasures <clears throat> and treasures of this world is the only way to find happiness right answer is choosing temporary pleasures yes yes so when you choose those type of uh, temporary pleasures it can it will lead to negative consequences colossians 2 verses 8 tells us that we should listen to the philosophies of this world true or false false right false yes <laughs> what does ephesians 4:27 advise us to do not give the devil a foothold in our lives to give the devil a foothold to befriend the devil or to ignore the devil right answer is ignore the devil do not give the devil a foothold in our lives yes praise god praise god god 22 verse 6 says train up a child in the way he should go and when he is old he will not depart from it what does this teach us The proverb teaches us that training a child has no impact on their future behavior. Proverb teaches us that children should be left to figure things out on their own. Or the proverb teaches us that if we train a child in the right and godly way, they will not depart from it when they are older. Or the proverb teaches us that children will always depart from the way they are, they were trained. The right answer is this proverb teaches us that if we train a child child in the right and godly way. they will not depart depart from it when they are older yes amen praise god so yes. it's a blessing for us when we have godly parents praise god praise god according to the bible what is renewing of your mind transforming thoughts to align with god's will attending church regularly reading the bible daily or practicing meditation right on transforming thoughts to align with god's will amen praise god so when we transform our thoughts to align with with god's will that is how we renew our mind and that is true repentance repentance is not just asking sorry or telling god change our old over thinking to new way of thinking according to word of god uh, say that again thanks yeah repentance is change our hold lower thinking to new higher thinking according to word of god amen it's god thank you jesus praise god thank you for participating everyone and yes thank you praise god praise god thank you constella for all this quiz thank you Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. <clears throat> Janisha, would you like to do the closing prayer? Yes, yes, sister. Okay. Okay. Thank Heavenly you. Father, Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you. Thank you, Holy Spirit, being on this session. You take control, Lord. You teaches us this through quiz, my Lord Jesus. You fill us your wisdom, your understanding, and your knowledge. Lord, it's a it's a differences between exactly you teaches us. It's a difference between worldly knowledge and spiritual knowledge, my Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, worldly knowledge is foolishness. Then you are yes. Then spiritual knowledge, my Lord Jesus Christ, because spiritual knowledge is eternal, my Lord Jesus Christ. It's never ending, Lord. <laughs> thank you holy spirit for filled with us your wisdom your knowledge and your understanding my lord jesus christ lord thank you for this session taking under your control my lord jesus we thank you holy spirit that every situ every 
session is going under blessed anointed and i live favored by god my lord jesus christ it's a same was gathering here and was not gathering here my lord jesus christ i bless each and every one and i release your fresh anointing and i pour out your love my lord jesus christ because your love never fails my lord jesus your love your true love my lord jesus christ and your unconditional love lord there are so many questions was uh, questions was going through and so much so many trials and persecution my lord jesus there is only one question that is no god but but my lord jesus christ you are you are done everything for us and it is written my lord jesus christ it is that is when we are alive that is a by god's grace when we are breathe that is by your god's grace when lord it's a gift from you my lord jesus nothing no one can do this my lord jesus lord even even we are breathing my lord jesus that is your grace my lord that is what you are what you are done in the cross my lord jesus lord we are saved in jesus name my lord jesus christ lord if lord we are we are we are committed sin but we have made righteousness with christ that is you made us righteousness my lord jesus and you made it divine exchange that is you only claimed it it is finished my lord jesus yes my lord jesus so many are knows that word it is finished but they are they are they are again and again doubting my lord jesus doubting is unbelief and it's a unbelief is a greatest greatest it's a big sin my lord jesus christ lord yes my lord you open their spiritual mind and spiritual ears my lord jesus christ lord thank you lord jesus you poured out your wisdom you poured out them to your wisdom your knowledge and your understanding my lord jesus without you we are nothing my lord jesus christ because put god in our life in first place that everything my lord jesus christ lord that is jesus is my source jesus is our source jesus is my source lord you as the great and mighty plans for each and every one my lord jesus lord if if anyone is neglecting if anyone is avoiding that is doesn't matter my lord jesus christ because it is written that is uh, isaiah 43 and you only you only you only spoke through me it's rahim a word my lord jesus christ you are precious to me i love you and i call by your name you are mine yes my lord jesus christ we are belongs to you that's why this world was hating us when we are belongs to this world this world is loving his own my lord jesus us but we are not belongs to this world my lord jesus we are belongs to the kingdom of heaven my lord jesus christ yes my lord jesus Hallelujah. i will make this prayer in mighty and mighty name of jesus amen and amen amen praise god amen such a powerful anointed actually, prayer actually actually yes please yes. but actually i was taking short 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 but suddenly that somebody is making me to talk talk talk, talk. i don't know that <laughs> praise, god. <laughs> praise god praise god that's the only thing i could not stop myself my mouth <laughs> i could not stop my mouth i'm trying <laughs> trying trying <Yes. laughs> the holy spirit please god yes he took control <laughs> Okay. Is that a piece is when I am telling no sister every time I experience okay when I am telling Holy Spirit any thank you for you are controlling okay then I am couldn't stop myself my mouth <laughs> really yes, somebody God, is telling the Paris is also not that sister but it's not Paris is it's real I I I have I have done this lively. I couldn't stop my mouth when I when I am telling Holy Spirit you take control then. i couldn't stop my mouth praise yes. god came from the heart yes 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 praise, praise god, god.